We're going to be taking a look at Tropical Cyclone Olga, plus also some severe thunderstorms that are going to be lashing the Brisbane area throughout the course of today. And we'll also take a look at some rainfall that's expected to materialise across the Australian tropics associated with two further tropical lows. So starting things off with Tropical Cyclone Olga. Powerful Category 3 strength, severe Tropical Cyclone Olga remains offshore from Western Australia this morning. It is a strong system and it is also intensifying. It's now up to Category 3 status and squeezing out an eye this morning. So it will likely intensify a little bit more over the coming four or five hours before it does terminally start to weak off from this evening. It is no threat to the land areas around the Kimberley and the Pilbara region of Western Australia. However, this strong tropical cyclone goes to show that we can't be writing off systems this late on in the season. We certainly can't be writing off small systems in the West Australian area as well. I did highlight this as a possibility. It being a small system, it would have a field day rapidly intensifying throughout the course of today, but it is about 12 hours away from some very hostile weather conditions for this system. So it will likely start terminal weakening in around 12 hours time, but not before what looks to be a bigger phase of intensification. We're now going to take a look at the forecast for this system. Uh, you can see initialized with wind speeds of around uh, 83 to kilometers an hour up towards 90 kilometers an hour. That is obviously severely underestimated from the Eastern Blue forecast model and also from the Access G3 model too. And this tropical cyclone probably has wind speeds closer to 150 kilometers an hour. It will likely peak out with wind speeds around 175 kilometers an hour, probably going to get to Category 4 status actually, even if the Bureau of Meteorology doesn't call it a Category 4 strength system it should likely get to Category 4 status just considering its impressive satellite appearance right now before, as I said, terminal weakening starts from around uh, this evening into early tomorrow morning. It shouldn't be a tropical cyclone as we get towards Tuesday. It's going to be facing some very hostile weather conditions in the mid-levels and in the upper levels as well, and I'll get to that in just a minute, but that's what's going to be causing its weakening. It is not any threat to land at all. Wind accumulation, which is the maximum wind gust across uh, parts the Kimberley region over the next 24 hours, uh, no, hang on, 72 hours rather, we're looking at wind gusts probably at around 50 kilometers an hour. This is not a cyclone threat to land. It's not even come close. It's not even going to come close to land. So this is nothing to be worrying about whatsoever. And rainfall accumulation over the same amount of time, just a couple of drops here and there um, across the extreme northern parts of I think it's Cape Leveki up towards Derby. You might be seeing up towards 15 or 25 millimetres there. But again, absolutely nothing crazy, nothing significant expected. Uh, and maybe a drop or two on the Pilbara coastline down towards Karatha. But once again, nothing significant from this tropical cyclone. It is no threat to land, even though it is right next door to Western Australia. This is a pretty menacing picture, that is for sure. Uh, just taking a look at the satellite imagery right now. This is a very menacing picture for a tropical cyclone to be this close to to Western Australia. And you guys up in Broome and Derby, you will be able to feel this system being just offshore uh, with the winds and the humidity there. But this is, I have to stress this, I can't stress this enough. This is no threat to land whatsoever. It is not going to be providing any significant weather conditions ashore across Western Australia. So do not fret about it whatsoever. Now I did stay, uh, state at uh, the start of the video that this system is going to be facing some hostile conditions over the next uh, couple of hours. Well, that is certainly the case, if we get up towards the uh, mid-levels, not right up in towards the high levels at 150 HPA, which is uh, where the tropical cyclones clouds kind of level off, you can see and where we measure wind shear, wind shear is going to be driving this storm apart over the next 12 to 24 hours. Right now where the system is, it's in a very favorable environment of around zero kilometers an hour of wind shear. So it's in a very good environment, but you can see these greens, which are already starting to get quite nasty and the yellows, which will tear the cyclone apart, let alone these reds that this storm will be entering in around 24 hours time. This tropical cyclone does have a very unfavorable environment ahead of it. And the same thing for mid-level humidity as well. It's not going to be looking too good for this tropical cyclone as you get up towards the mid-levels. You can see it's going to be in a very hostile environment very shortly. Where the system is right now, it's doing just fine, but I reckon this is gonna have a dry air intrusion in around six to 12 hours time. And you're gonna see all of the thunderstorm activity uh, really stripped away from it. and we'll also see what I like to call moting around the tropical cyclone. And that means we're going to see like little gaps here, these little white gaps really dig them way, their way in towards the eye. And the system will look very spirally, very kind of 
swirly. It will look like a classic tropical cyclone that you might see in a school book or something. It won't look like the textbook huge massive convection that you might see offshore from a land area. So this system is going to have a very hard time in around 6 to 12 hours time and I reckon it is peaking just about now. The Bureau of Meteorology also agrees with me. They actually had a very good forecast out of the gate. I know the Bureau of Meteorology can get these systems quite wrong sometimes but you've got to give it to them. They made an incredibly good forecast right out the gate calling for a category three system straight away. Uh, I reckon they nailed it and the Bureau of Meteorology does remain the best source of information for West Australian tropical cyclones, that's for sure. They did a great job on this system and they are going to do a great job with the remainder of its forecast unless this system pulls something and gets towards category five status uh, later today, which I don't foresee happening whatsoever. There's really not a chance that does happen. The Bureau of Meteorology would have nailed this tropical cyclone forecast. They nailed it from a couple of days out and it made my job for casting this system much, 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 much easier as well. So I'm very thankful that they nailed it. Uh, very, That's for sure. And I'm sure people on uh, with the West Australian coastline are also very appreciative that the Bureau of Meteorology nailed their forecast too, because it's just great when the Bureau of Meteorology gets stuff right. Uh, nothing happening in terms of rainfall. I think I've already covered that. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of it for this tropical cyclone. Severe tropical cyclone Olga came out of nowhere, and it certainly is intensifying quite nice. Well, I mean, it didn't really come out of nowhere. I've been looking at this system for the past two weeks on the forecast, but still, it has kind of surprised us. Um, it went still really not sure about this Gulf of Carpentaria system, that's for sure. I mean, while we're looking at the tropics, we might as well just take a peek at it right now. Um, it does still look like something's going to develop next Sunday, which again, uh, considering the fact that this is a carbon copy of yesterday's forecast from the Eastman BF and the Access G3 model, I do have a higher degree of confidence in saying that this will possibly happen. But again, I'm really not going to give this any attention until probably uh, this coming Wednesday or Thursday when I'll give a very detailed forecast update up here in Far Northern Queensland regarding these systems. Um, but it definitely looks like wet season 2024 is coming coming to an end. I mean, it's going to be a dry week up in Fine Northern Queensland, only 25 millimetres for Cairns, 20 millimetres for Townsville, maybe 50 for Cooktown and Innisfail, but again, looking at relatively dry up there compared to the weather that they have had recently. Now, the incredible rainfall that pulled out of Sydney yesterday, I mean, that was just something that was um, Friday night into Saturday morning, up to 400 millimetres in some locations. A little bit more rainfall is possible throughout the course of today from, from some thunderstorms and maybe a thunderstorm storm or two up around the Brisbane and Gympie area today. The majority of the thunderstorms were actually overnight uh, for the Brisbane area and they and they did actually get quite severe overnight as well. We can take a look at some of them on the 12 hour rainfall uh, radar here and they kind of just pulled away but yeah some nasty thunderstorms up there. Brisbane I believe copped 45 millimetres overnight and there are some areas around the Gold Coast around Coomera that copped more rainfall up towards 80 millimetres. Again I did say that Saturday night there was going to be a chance of some strong thunderstorms and heavy rainfall in the Brisbane area and it certainly did deliver. The forecast was very good um, from there and it certainly does look like the rainfall event here that I've predicted um, from Wednesday onwards uh, it, it is materialized as expected which is great news because it means that the forecast models have been bang on here uh, and it's great giving a good forecast for the Sydney area because it can be a very unpredictable place to give a forecast for uh, so yeah I'm certainly going to be quite proud of myself for the forecast there that's for sure um, some rainfall moving in towards Tasmania as well overnight Launceston copped a little bit of rainfall I did highlight the possibility that Tasmania was going to be receiving some rainfall. Hopefully it does ease off through that the course of today uh, throughout this Sunday. And we'll also see the rainfall pull away from New South Wales and the coastline there and it should start to move into a much drier phase from this afternoon. At least hopefully a couple of days with some dry weather, some warm dry weather as well to really dry out the rainfall uh, that fell especially over the western suburbs. I mean that was incredible. The pictures coming out of Warragumba Dam the amount of water spilling over there that was something and yeah definitely Sydney does not need any rainfall like that for a good couple of months. Um, and I mean, we have been very lucky around Sydney, the fact that they haven't had very significant, intense rainfall throughout the summer period. They've had some good days, some very nice thunderstorms that have dropped 50 millimetres here and there, and they've been quite consistent. So the weather for Sydney has been behaving very nicely. Um, and then, yeah, that, uh, with the exception of that uh, day on Friday where they had 400 millimetres in some areas, the weather has actually been very good for Sydney this wet season, very well behaved and they certainly don't need any rainfall like that for a good couple of months because that will just cause more headaches than it will solve 
I tell you what does need rainfall, Western Australia, I know I state this every single video and you guys are probably sick of me sounding like a broken record, but please, we need some rainfall down here. I've never seen a fire weather alert issued uh, for April and we're currently under a fire weather warning right now, expected to go to 36 degrees Celsius in Perth today. I mean, that is hot for April. Um, it, and it's just, just, it's just bone dry. It's absolutely horrible. Um, we do actually have a we do actually have a soil moisture setting on windy.com, uh, which is absolutely beautiful. Drought monitoring, I believe that is what it's called. Um, and if we were ta to take a look at the drought right now, I mean, this is just ridiculous. This is soil moisture around the Perth area sitting at around 1% or 2%, so definitely down in towards the single figures here. And that is kind of the story for the majority of Western Australia, with the exception of the Kimberley region. Uh, it's been a very, very dry wet season. It was Western Australia's hottest summer on record and probably the driest summer on record as well. And you can just see the incredible inequality of rainfall across the nation, uh, South Australia and Western Australia really missing out in typical El Nino fashion, might I add. This is very typical for an El Nino year um, that has swung into a La Nina. So again, it, it, the weather has been behaving as the climate drivers uh, have been saying. But again, look up towards far northern Queensland, rain, moil, uh, soil moistures rather of around 100% up there. And again, higher soil moisture anomalies down there and very below average soil moisture anomalies for Western Australia. So yeah, the weather has been certainly quite dry, that's for sure, across Western Australia. It's been quite sad to see, um, especially all the trees that have started to die in the area. I mean, it, you know it gets bad when those black boys start dying off. That, that is a sign of some very dry times that we are in. Um, but yeah, I, I can waffle on about this drought every single day, but it does look like there might be a little bit of reprieve to the drought conditions at the beginning of next next week. It does look like we're going to see a cold front sweep up from the Southern Ocean. It'll be a very weak front by the time it gets to Western Australia, but it should be cooling weather down uh, by that time, I believe next Monday. We've only got a 20 degree day on the forecast and then next Tuesday as well, uh, maybe 25 degrees uh, on the forecast there. But it does look like as we start getting in towards the middle of April, we're going to start to see some dry conditions, which is just fantastic. And I'm waiting out for them uh, desperately. Uh, some wetter conditions, I mean, nothing uh, drier, hopefully <laughs> continuing it from this uh, very long, hot and dry summer that we've had. But yeah, around the rest of the nation, nothing too crazy going on. We can take a look at the snow forecast of course and this snow that's coming in for Victoria over the next I believe it's three to five days oh no it's actually in the next uh, day one to uh, day three so it's probably going to be happening on it Monday evening, I believe. Yeah, Monday evening into Tuesday morning. This snowfall definitely looks quite set in stone now for parts of Victoria and also into New South Wales, where we could be seeing up towards five or six centimetres fall in some areas in the extreme uh, highlands up in uh, Victoria and New South Wales. So the snow will be very hit and miss, and it will also likely be very light up there. But again, it is snow, and it will be the first snow for the snow season of 2024. So we're holding out for that uh, happening, that's for sure. Anyways, that is the latest that I have on the weather situation nationwide. Thank you so much for watching this video. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Your name's on screen right now. If you do want to get your name mentioned at this part of the video, then please do click the join button and select a category that you would like to intensify to. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.